All right, what we got here, a lot of you guys are using this Nest Pie case. And a lot of you guys are wanting to use a light gun, play some of the uh, light gun games in the arcade. Well, most people don't want to spend $120 on a aim track light gun. If you can afford it, spend it, they're amazing. This one has a recoil, you can get the non-recoil for about 100 bucks. Um, if you buy the recoil, it's about 120 bucks, but then you also have to buy a power supply, which is another 20, 30 bucks. So you're looking around 150 bucks for one of these. But most people don't wanna spend that, don't blame them. Another option is these light guns that you can buy off Amazon, eBay for about 10 bucks. They won't work with the standard TVs. So the option I've come up with, I've contacted Ultimark. You guys go to ultimark.com. Here's where you can get the guns where I get all my arcade stuff. But they actually have an electronics kit um, that you can take electronics that are normally inside this gun and put in anything you want. Or if you got a sensor goes bad, you can rebuild these guns. So what I've done is I've contacted Andy Ultramark, great guy. He sent me over a kit. And what we're going to do is we're basically going to turn this Nintendo Zapper in to one of these light guns. No, I'm not putting a recoil pack in there. I could probably squeeze one in here. Um, into the handle if I want to. Might do that later on. Um, but for now, all we're going to do is we're going to take this thing apart. We're going to put the sensor in here. We're going to wire it all up. And then we're going to put a USB cord that comes out and plugs into this. Because I think with this working on this Nest Pi case, um, it's really going to look great. Just kind of finishes off my what I'm going for. So let's get started. Took the screws off both these guns. Go ahead and take apart the uh, NES Zapper really quick. Um, when you took the screws out, flip it over, can be a little pain to get apart. Um, first thing we had to do was I unsoldered these wires here, and then this go ahead and slides out, and then we'll put this cable aside. It has the old NES plug on it, so can't use it with our NES Pi case. All right, guys, first thing we're going to do here is we're going to take the sensor or the module here, and we're going to go ahead and tilt the light gun up, and we're going to set it down in here. And you're going to notice that the sensor fits in here, but the problem we're having is it can't go all the way in because you can see right here that this piece here that holds in this piece of plastic that prevents the dirt from getting down in there is preventing this board from going back any farther. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a grinder and we are going to grind that out. Or you can use a razor blade. I guess I'll start out with a razor blade first. All right, guys, I went ahead and went pretty crude, just used my pliers and rip that out so I use my knife and cut it down and you can see not the prettiest but it worked I did that to both sides as you can see there and it'll fit only thing that's keeping it from closing now is these corners just a little too wide so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my grinder and just round them off and be careful not to hit anything on this board get this ground down the sensor's got to sit in here nice and square because the way the software works, it detects angles and everything else. So, go ahead and get my grinder out and round these off, and then we will be good to go. All right, guys, you can see I did the little grind in here, got the edges rounded off. Best way to test fit this is close this thing back up, take it upside down, and slide it in and see if the module fits. When you guys get your kit, um, obviously it's going to have the board, it's going to have your trigger assembly, and then it's going to have um, your USB cable. I've cut mine because there's two different boards you can get. This is the stock board that comes in the aim track. There's another one, the retrofit one, that actually has a USB you can just plug right in. Uh, if you don't have the USB one, then if you have this style, it makes it kind of stick up pretty high and pretty bulky when you try to fit it in here. So I went ahead and cut this, um, looked up online for the USB wiring diagram. Um, the red is positive, the black is negative, green is positive data, white is negative data, then you get your shielded ground also. Um, the board is labeled, so all we're gonna do is um, solder these up, and then we'll have the cable ran for the USB, and then we get done with that, um, we'll hook up our trigger, and what we're gonna do is drill a hole either on one side or both sides, I haven't decided yet, and put two triggers on either side, just like the aim track has. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get this soldered up and I'll be right back. But well, when you get done, guys, 
Um, the red wire goes on the far left, the green wire goes next to it, and the black wire goes next to that. Um, and then right below the red wire, um, the white wire goes there, and then the shielded wire um, I just put in one of the mounting holes um, to the ground. So everything's hooked up, so you can test fit it. Everything's going to fit in there perfectly. Only thing left we have to do now is um, plug in this and hook up all the wires to the triggers. But before I finish up the wiring on the inside and hook up all the triggers, um, you guys don't have to do this step, you can if you want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to install a button on the side. Um, that way I can shoot my bombs or do some other functions in some of these games. Um, you can add another one to the other side, but I think I'm just going to stick with this one. Most of the games that I've played um, really only require two triggers. So we'll go ahead and get these buttons installed, and who knows, I may change my mind to throw one over here just for the heck of it. So what I'm going to do for the trigger is just put my finger out. I'm going to end up using this finger to uh, pull the trigger. So I'm going to set this finger up here. Um, kind of see what feels comfortable when I'm shooting the gun and once I got that marked out um, there's actually uh, seven of these so I'm going to pick the fourth one come down kind of center it in the gun and I think I'm going to put it right about there so I'll go ahead and mark this I'll go ahead and drill this hole out and we'll get the button put in there and just glue it in place I ordered two different styles of buttons. Um, got these little tactile switches, which I drilled out, and I think it'll look okay, uh, but really those usually don't feel too good in your fingers. I also have these bigger tactile switches. Um, I think as long as I get the hole right, I can slide this in through the back, and I think it'll look pretty nice. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is finish drilling this out. Um, originally I drilled out for a tactile switch. Finish drilling out with my step bit, until I reach this size and then I'm going to mount this below the surface and I'm not going to have any of these lips or anything showing. As you can see guys I used my step bit and ended up with a perfect fit. I think that's going to look really nice. So just to help give me a reference point I did decide I'm going to put a second button on the other side. I do like the way it looks. I just put a piece of tape down. I'm going to overlay these together and then I'm going to use a pin and mark out the inside just so I can get them as close as I can and then I'll try and find the center. That looks pretty good. Now that I have both sides drilled out um, with these buttons it gives you quite a bit of spacing so it's actually going to work out pretty perfect um, what I'm going to do with these buttons is I'm going to go ahead and drill through the orange case now. And then the button caps are going to sit in here between the gray and the orange. And the actual buttons are going to be uh, hot glued to the inside of the case. So I'm going to go ahead and get these drilled out. And then we'll get everything glued in place and get it finished up. Got the hole all drilled out. Uh, chamfered both edges just a little bit. This cap actually just did big enough for those to stick through. Um, looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and um, pop on this back piece. So that locks the button in place. And set this thing down. Set it on this side. And let's see how it looks. Looks pretty good. Just need to glue the button in place. And I think everything's going to work out well. Okay guys, uh, here's the uh, gun. We have the uh, tactile switch all installed, working. I got it all hot glued in there. Um, we went ahead and got both sides um, finished up. So the next step we need to do is we're going to run our common ground um, for our PCB. So what we're going to do is run the common ground um, from this front switch to one of these and then we're going to run a wire from here up to here. We got to make sure we leave enough slack um, so we can lift this up and set it back down on top of it. Um, so 
that should be about it. I'm going to go ahead and solder these wires back into place. And when I get done, I'll come back and show you guys the end result. Just finished up all the wiring, guys. Um, I'll go over it really quick. Um, so the brown wire here, I hooked up. Um, it's ground. So the ground goes from here to one side of these close connectors on the tactile switch. And then from that, it goes over to this other tactile switch. And then from this uh, connector here, the ground um, was wide off over there. It goes up and I had to, these wires weren't quite long enough so I had to extend a little bit. So the brown wire goes up and the ground pin is actually this very back pin on this control board, on this wire connector. So I went ahead and hooked that up. Um, the very front wire, um, I brought all the way back and it goes to the trigger and I put it in the middle pin. So I actually close this, it completes that circuit and will activate the trigger. Uh, the second wire back, I brought to this right side and then the third wire back, I brought over to this other tactile switch. So, got everything glued in there. Went ahead and covered up all the connectors with some hot glue. And I went ahead and glued in this board. And then let's go ahead and do our first test fit here. I have not closed this up yet. So let's hope everything fits. And everything does. So, here we go. Everything uh, snapped in there. I'm sure you guys can see the module in there. Um, there's that button, there's that one. Uh, you guys probably could put two in a row here if you wanted, if you want to hit left and right. Um, I might do that on my next version, but I really don't use this gun that much, this button. So it'll be there, I can always pull my thumb up and hit it. So we'll go ahead and get all the screws put back in and we'll hook this up and see how it goes. Well, here's the final product. Just put all the screws back in. Um, got the wires coming out. Tactile button. Tactile button there. I really like how those turned out. I think they look really nice. And then you get your trigger. So those will work right. Uh, really nice. If you guys are uh, left-handed, you can program this to shoot your bombs. If you're right-handed, you guys can program that. Uh, like I said, if you guys want to, you guys could easily just add a second switch up here on either side so if you wanted to use that you could but overall I'm uh, really happy with the way this thing turned out um, I'm sure I'll post some videos here in a second um, me using this thing thanks guys all right guys got my NES zapper here with the Ultimark kit in it my Porvo arcade hooked up to my 32 inch TV you can see works shoot off screen reloads And also, the side buttons also work. That's what I use for my uh, start and that coin. So, there you go. Up and working.